Hi viewers and we're going to be learning how to use Python to create collision detections in the part workbench or even the part design. So we've got our cube here, we've got these two objects here, so these are obstacles, this is our actor, and we'll just move this over, run our macro, and you'll notice that it's turned red, so that's a collision, move that off, run our macro again and you can see that we can detect collisions just with this simple macro which is no longer than 21 lines including spaces and there you go so this is the start of more advanced collisions this is a bounding box collision and we're going to be looking at creating this collision and then in future videos we're going to be looking at affecting the object from the collision, so we'll bounce back. From and the forth, collision, so we'll bounce back. And do forth, something like knock this away. Do something like knock this away. So we can actually simulate. So we can actually simulate springs, cogs, etc. Springs, cogs, etc. The forces and upon them. The full physics in there with Python. Okay. Let's get to it. If you like this video, please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. Okay, so on screen I've got a presentation of a simple 2D collision. So this is in 2D space, not 3D. And you can see our actor, which is the one that we're moving, has collided with our obstacle. Now, you won't see these boxes around your obstacles because they are bounding boxes. Inside we have an object. So if you choose a simple circle and a simple triangle, and we're looking in 2D space, and this is where it was before, and now it's here. So this is our movement. So it's gone from here to here. What you will normally see is just basically a circle and a triangle. So this is our actor, this is our obstacle, and what FreeCAD does is creates a square around this that tightly fits the object inside it, and it gives each of these an XY coordinate in 2D space. So what we end up with is that we can actually find out we draw down like so you can actually find out the corners of where this starts so this is about 150 this is about say 180 and then 190 so this will be the X min and this will be the X max and the same for Y we come in this way for both of these then this will be the y max and this will be the y min and finding out the distance between these two in other words taking one away from the other that's the height of the object and the same here taking one away from the other it's the width so that's how the boundary boxes are actually created on the objects and they're tightly fitting so they fit around the object and they give a basic boundary box of where the collision will happen obviously if you're looking at this in here if you're trying to collide in here the minute our object gets in here then it will be detected as a collision although it's not actually inside the object but that's when we get into more, more advanced polygon collisions but we're not looking at that we're looking at simple boundary box collisions so this one is in collision at the moment. So how do we detect this? Well, to detect this, we need to go through each of the axes. So we need to go through the X and check all the points along the X and then go through the Y and check all the points. So we're just looking at two points on our actor and two points on our object or obstacle along the X, X axis. So let's do the collision for the X. 
So this is what we're colliding on at first. So we're going to do our checks along the X axis. We get those right first. So what we need to do is check the obstacle. So our obstacle. And we need to check that the X min of the obstacle. So if you remember that the X min, if we draw a line down like that, is X min. Here's X max. So our obstacle X min has to be smaller or equal to the actor's X max. So we look on here, our obstacle's X min is sits here or here. So that's X min. And it is smaller than or equal to the obstacles X max here and here. But we need an additional check in there as well. Because if this was somewhere over here, this point here, or somewhere over here, then that will still meet true. And though it wouldn't have collided. So it could even be over here. Our obstacle X min is still then smaller than or equal to the, the X max of our actor. So we need an additional check in here. So we need to do an AND. And we need to check the obstacle x max. So here's the x max here. So obstacle x max. Is greater, so it's got to be this way greater than or equal to the actor's x min. Which that one there, that, that's true. So this will equal to true. Once we pass this test, so this is test one, then we need to repeat this test along the y-axis. So we just repeat this test, but instead of using the x min, x max, we use the y. Once we've done that, and those both are true, then we know we're in collision. So I'll just repeat that test along the y-axis now. So now we're checking along the y-axis. So if we just move these over, like so. So we're doing our y-axis. So we've got y min and y max. For this one on our obstacle, we've got y min and y max here as well. So test two is for the y, and we're checking that the obstacle, which is here, the y min, which is this one. So the object's y min, which is, if you look at our objects, our y min is there. So our object or obstacle. So that must be smaller than or equal to the y max of our actor. You can see the y max there. So that y min is sitting in between y min and the y max of our actor. So it's smaller than or equal to the y max. And also we need the AND objects or obstacles Y max. The obstacle Y max has to be greater than or equal to the actor's Y min. So this can't sit above here because our first test will actually pass, but our second test will fail. greater than or equal to actors y min. And if we've got a second axis like the z axis, we just repeat this test again and then that translates to 
3D space. So this one at the moment is in 2D space. So 2D space. And in 3D we just add the Z. So that's enough of my scribbling. Let's see how we can actually translate this to code. So we're going to create a new document. And I'm going over to the part workbench. And I'm just going to create a cone on there. Like so. And I'm just going to translate that somewhere. So transform and just move it somewhere. Okay, that. And I'm also going to actually create a cylinder on there. So these are the obstacles. These are the ones that I want to check for collisions with. We're going to create our actor as a cube. And this is the one we're going to be moving to collide with these objects or obstacles. So we've got those in there. So that's our scene, very simple scene. I'm going to jump into macros. So macro, macros, and we can create a new one there. And we can start programming. First thing we need is to assign up a variable. And we'll assign that, that variable to FreeCAD. And that pulls in the FreeCAD environment. So in there we've got things like app.activeDocument to actually pull the active document, which will be this one here. Now we can assign each of these up to a variable. So just calling it cone. You can call these whatever you like, but calling it cone to actually make it obvious what it is. And call that one app dot active document. So I'm actually pulling in the active document at the moment, which is this. And I want the name of that cone. So if I roll over it, this one here, or we'll click on it. If you cast your eyes down to the bottom, it's got valid internal name cone. And that's what we'll be using. So if I cover it down to the cylinder, you see it's got valid internal name cylinder. And the cube, valid internal name box. That's a bit different. Um, but notice the case as well. So they've got an upper case first. So that distinguishes the name of those items. So app.activeDocument.cone. We want one for the cylinder as well. So cylinder dot cylinder. So those two there are the obstacles and now I want my actor so I'm going to just call this my actor actually for the variable equals app dot active document dot I think that was box yeah dot box and we want some panels out so let's view the report panel so panels report view now we've got all of these, I'm going to group these two together because these are going to be the two items that I want to check for collisions with. So what I'm doing is checking for collisions with the actor against obstacle 1 and obstacle 2, but I'm not checking against collisions between these two obstacles here. I'm just going to do it actor based. So I'm going to create a collection called Ob Objects to Check. I'm going to equal that to a collection of cone, comma, cylinder. So if I print Objects to Check,
and run the macro you can see I've got the part feature two part features in there and that will be the cone and cylinder that are in there so the next thing is I'm going to come up the top and I'm going to create a function so define for the function and function do collisions and in that function I'll pass the actor and the objects so this takes an actor and objects so what this does is that we just pass down here I will just pass in here the objects to collide and my actors to run this this method at the top so I'm just going to do a print in here and I'm just going to print the actor and print the objects show they've been passed in and down here we'll call the function so do collisions and we'll pass in my actor and the objects to check so when we run that now you can see that we've got some prints there let's just get rid of that one And you can see we've got the part feature, which is the actor, and the obstacles that we've passed. Now we're calling this, we can now start looping through all the objects and checking them with the actors to see if they've collided. So for that, I'm going to use a for. Now I'm just going to use a variable name, say obj for object. So we're checking that for object in objects so each time this goes around it'll pull an object from the objects and either sit up as obj so we can actually do something with it and we'll check obj against the actor to see if it's collided and for that I'm going to use a second function or a second method in here we'll just print for the time being print obj and you can see we've got the two parts coming out there now I'm going to put a second method in here and I'm going to call it does intercept and in here I'm going to pass the actor and an object matter of fact I'm just going to call it A and O colon end and tab in so we're going to run this each time with this actor and object so in here I'm just going to call it does intercept we'll pass in the A and the O and in here I'll just do print A and print O so each time this goes around it will call the actor and the object and we'll check for a collision between them. So I'm just going to use str a plus collide. str o. And I'll see up here I've got to pass the actor in, not o and obj like so 
So those will collide in there. So we pass in the actor and the object and that will be passed down to the does intercept. And we'll just say this is the matter as A and O in there. And you see the reason in a minute because this will keep it nice and shorthand. So you can see the checks for each of those objects that it's going through. So the first time it will go through the cone and the second time it will go through the cylinder. Now what I really want to do is pass the boundary box in here. So we go back to, up to here. So we've got the actor, which is our my actor, which is the app.active.document.box. And with that, there's a property called shape. And also on the shape, there's something called bound box. And that's the boundary box for that shape and it's the same for the object because these are shapes as well dot shape dot bound box you see we've got the boundary boxes coming out so these are vectors for the boundary box so we've got x y z and X, Y, Z here. So you've got the X min, Y min, Z min, X max, Y max, and Z max. And you see that it's 10 between those, and that's because if we look, we took the defaults and we're we'll first checking our actor, so it would be this one. If we look down to our data, we can see the length of 10 there. And if I come in here, you cast your eyes down to the bottom, you can see that says minus 5, 16, and 10. And there it's minus 5, 16, and 0 you can see how those relate to the boundary box. So it's just placing a box around this, a type box around this to find the boundaries. And that's what we're gonna check here. So we've passed in the boundary box, so we've got that now. Now we can start checking the X min and the X max of that boundary box against the X min and X max of our obstacles. So if our obstacle dot x min, so it's x capital capital x capital m for x min, smaller than or equals to our actors x max, and our object x max greater than or equal the actors x min. And if that passes, so that condition there, then we go on to the y axis and we do the same. So there we go. So if the objects y min smaller than or equal to the actors y max and the object's y max is greater than or equal to the actor's y min and then we go on and check the z axis and we do the same so if those three checks are true they all pass then we need to return a true so we're saying that they have collided so i'm going to return true and also i'm going to print true in there as well so we can see what's happening if they don't then we need to return a false so return false so if all this fails then we go through here and it fails here then we go down to the bottom and just return a false nothing is in collision and I'm also going to 
come here and print false. It won't tell us what we collided with, but it just said, we'll say that we're in a collision somewhere. We'll look down here and you can see we've got a force that's come off. So nothing's collided at the moment. If we move something, so if we move, that, move our actor, transform that. There we go, so that should collide with cone. Run a macro, and then we can actually see we've got a false and a true coming up here. So we've got a true for one of them. Now let's put some checks in here to find out which one has. So before I go ahead, I'm just going to clear this up a bit. So I'm going to take out the prints. And I'm going to take out the blank lines as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a test in here, conditional Test. So I'm going to go if and then a colon. And I'm going to print the object dot label. I will just print in the label of that object that's coming in here when it's collided. So we're saying if this does intersect, which returns either true or false. If it returns true, it will print the label else we're going to do something else so what I'm going to do in here is actually come in here and for the else I'm going to change the color of the diffuse color of the object so that will actually change the color of the object so object dot view object it's a command you want dot diffuse color c o l o r and then that equals and you use a bracket because you're passing in the floats in here so this is red channel zero is about zero so i want the red channel off i want full green 1.0 and i want no blue 0, 0.0 so it's red green blue in there so from zero to one is the intensity of those colors so zero zero means that channel's off one dot zero means this channel is fully on and zero dot zero is that, that one off red green blue so this should show up green if we haven't collided so it's just set that object to the color green I'm going to use that above as well and set it to red if it has collided so what we do is we get our obstacles different colors depending if they're in collision or not so I'm going to set this one to red so I want long enough red channel it can be full red so if our intersection has happened we print out the label we set the objects view object dot diffuse color to red if it hasn't intersected we actually set the color to green so we go back now they're both in green and we've got no label come up so let's change our cues position now so transform that and just touch one of those it's okay that we'll run this now it's macro execute macro you can see cylinders popped up and our cylinders now are in red we'll transform that over to the cone try that again Now our cone's in red. Now if this was in a loop, we could have this pinging backwards and forwards between these two, changing the, co the color and actually reversing direction of this cube. So it will look like we're bouncing back and forth from these objects. I'm not gonna go into that for this tutorial. This is a simple tutorial to allow you to 
get into collision detection. I will be using it for future tutorials for relations for springs and mechanical movement. So we'll go into it then. But I hope this has helped with giving you an introduction to how to do a simple bounding box object collision. So I hope that's helped. I hope you've learned a bit of Python there. And I'll see you again shortly. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.